In the last 10 or 15 years, element filters have become much more popular. And the reason that is, is first of all, it started in the early 90s, mid 90s. California suffered some severe droughts. Lots of people in California had swimming pools, but they had a problem. Sand filters require backwashing to clean them. What that means is on a sand filter is you backwash the filter and it takes dirty water and cleans the filter and blows dirty water out of the pool. Well, that was wasting water at a time when California didn't need to waste water. So they kind of outlawed or made it against the rules to have sand filters because they wasted so much water. In the process, they developed element filters. Now, in the old days, in the early days of pools, element filters were very popular. They were also why pools got a reputation for being hard to take care of. The old elements were about this big and about that big around, and you had to clean it pretty much every day. There are still some pools out there that use the old element systems, the old style, very small. This is a 150 square feet element filter. Now, to give that some comparison, a 30-inch sand filter, 30-inch round sand filter, filters with about nine square feet of surface area. And then as the sand gets dirty, it cakes up, but it's really filtering with about nine square feet. This is 150 square feet. A filter like this can go perhaps all summer on a normal size pool. It's normally it will have to be cleaned one time. And that will vary from pool to pool, of course, depending on how much dirt, how much dust, how well you take care of your pool. But these filters filter really, really fine particles. And the advantage to an element filter is it always filters fine particles. Sand filters only filter well when they're dirty. Element filters filter the same all the time. It's very much the same as your oil filter in your car or your air filter in your car. It's a polyester element and it filters at about six to eight microns all the time. You know, to put that into comparison, a sand filter when it's dirty filters at about 20 microns until when it's clean, it's about 20 microns. When it's dirty, it gets down into that eight to 10 microns. This is as low as six and eight microns on a normal element. So let me show you how this works. The water comes from the skimmer down to the front of the pump. This is the hair and leaf pot. It's being circulated through the pump and it goes into the filter. What happens at this point is the water is coming into this big vessel. And then the water comes through the filter where it's being filtered, collected, and then pumped back into the pool via the return jet. This is the actual filter itself. So let me tell you one of the things to be cautious of. When this filter is very, very new or very, very clean, the water runs through that filter very easily. So a little pressure gauge up here on the top may say zero pressure. But that doesn't mean that water isn't circulating. What you do is you look at where the water is coming back into the pool. If water is coming back into the pool, then everything is working just fine. Now, if the, as the filter gets dirty, that pressure gauge will tend to climb just a little bit. What I always recommend, though, is don't really pay too much attention to that gauge. Look at the water coming back into the pool. If the water coming back into the pool is still circulating fairly well, it's not necessary to clean the filter. Now, the way that you clean these filters is really, you don't want to use a high pressure pressure washer, but any type of a pressure wand, and we actually sell a very nice pressure wand, or go to the car wash, and what you do is you pressure wash it from the inside out. That blows the dirt kind of out of the filter, and then you pressure wash it like this, squirting the, the pleats out and brushing them out. That will clean the filter. If at any time you say, well, you know, the filter's probably old, they're not very, ex, you know, very expensive to replace, but you can bring a filter back to life using diluted muriatic acid in a scrub bucket. What I'd recommend before you do that is call your family leisure or check with the frequently asked questions on how to do clean a, an element filter. But generally, an element filter will go with one cleaning, maybe no cleanings, all summer long, depending on your pool, how much dust and dirt it gets. Now, one thing that that can cause a little bit of a problem with is when an element filter is brand new, it is filtering very, 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 very efficiently, and that pump is sucking a lot of water. All right, well, what water has to come from this skimmer? 
Well, the problem with that is sometimes the skimmer cannot deliver as much water as the pump is trying to suck. And so what will happen is a little whirlpool will form inside of the skimmer. That whirlpool will form, looks like a tornado, kind of an inverted tornado. That whirlpool will form and it'll suck air all the way back to this pump. Now, when that happens and air gets into the pump, the pump loses prime. Well, to fix that, you unplug it, crack the lid just a little bit, just crack it for a second, that'll reprime it. Now, on element systems, you can actually leave the filter run and simply take the bleed valve up here. That will bleed any air in the system out, and that will also reprime the pump. So if you ever lose prime on an element system, crack the lid is the traditional method, or bleed the air off up here. Now, if you notice this is happening over and over again, then chances are your water level is too low. You're trying to suck more water than the pump can deliver or than the skimmer can deliver. I always recommend that the water level be above the second screw, actually somewhere between the second screw and the top of the skimmer. If your water level is low and you start to lose prime like that, or if the filter is brand new and you're losing prime, there's a cheating trick. It's called a tennis ball. Just drop the tennis ball into the skimmer. Well, what would happen is, as that whirlpool starts to form, the tennis ball gets sucked to the vortex of the whirlpool, and the air can't be sucked down into the pump. Well, if the air doesn't go down into the pump, you won't lose prime. It's just an old trick. If you start seeing a whirlpool or you start losing prime consistently, just put a tennis ball in the skimmer. Element filter is very, very simple. You basically turn it on. In the springtime, you can turn it on and just run it about 12 hours a day. Once you get into that 85 degrees or maybe 75 degree water temperatures, 72 degree water temperatures, 85 or 90 degree outdoor temperatures, just let it run 24 seven. If water ever coming back into the pool slows down to a trickle, it's time to clean the element. Elements clean just by pressure washing the inside and then the outside and you're good to go. Put it back in, off and running. Element filters are simple, easy, and effective.